Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk about adapted note reading and rhythm activities that you could do with your students with exceptionalities in the music lesson, whether it's online or in person. As you know, exploring and processing rhythm and notation might be quite challenging and it's quite different with students with exceptionality. So it's really important to adapt and adjust the teaching content to meet the needs of the students. So in the rhythm, I'm going to talk about different activities that you can do with your students, which is associating rhythmic patterns with syllables or breaking down the play alongs. Um, doing guess the rhythm games and creating your own rhythm. So if we start with associating the rhythmic patterns with syllables, uh, some students might find it really hard to clap or tap an abstract rhythm. But if you associate it with um, a word, they might feel the drive in the rhythm. It might be easier for them to to, to do the activity, basically. So um, if we associate it with the fruits, we could do berry, berry, nut, nut. Or you can use it to get like tactile feedback, use um, um, a squishy ball or a percussion instrument and do, do the rhythm. Of course, you can model first and then the student get to try. You can change the theme based on the student's interest. So this is like a fruit rhythm uh, you could do like if they like animals or trains buses pokemon anything that you feel they're very interested in it will really motivate them to to do the rhythm if you're doing play alongs with the students it's important to break it down so for example uh, if they're doing a song or just a rhythmic patterns uh, a rhythmic pattern you can introduce the rhythm practice clapping it or tapping it and then um, explain the cue so when are you gonna when are we gonna play when are we gonna stop and then you can play the rhythm as a group or uh, or individually so let me give you an example let's say we're doing bingo um, so I can use maybe a big um, picture of the rhythm uh, and then I will model the rhythm by clapping b i n g o and then the student will practice um, back and forth. And then we can use percussion instruments, let's say, and then talk about the cue. So maybe this sign means stop, and then this sign means play. So let's try. Are you ready? And then we go E, I, N, G, O, and we stop. Now back and forth until like we, we're ready to play, and then we can put the music on or play the music, and the students get to uh, to to do the rhythm. It's a really fun way to simplify rhythm, rhythmic patterns, maybe in a piece they're playing or a song they're singing and so on. Um, or if you're doing a group uh, group lesson, it's really fun to go through this process and it simplifies it, uh, breaks it down for them so they're ready to do the activity. Guess the rhythm game is a lot of fun. So you can do, uh, you can show the student two rhythmic cards and then you play one of them and the student wouldn't be looking. And then you ask the student, so which one uh, did I play? So let me give you an example. Let's say I play uh, one rhythm and I do. And then I ask the student, which one did they play? One or two? Pick one and they will pick. If the student is nonverbal, then you can say, can you tap your shoulders if it's one? Can you clap your hands if it's two? And so on and so forth. Creating your own rhythm is fantastic because it allows the student to explore. So in Chrome Music Lab, this is a free website. There's no login or anything. So if you type Chrome Music Lab, you will find different games. One of them is rhythm. And when you click on the grid to build your own rhythm and they have different sets of instruments, percussion instruments, so it's really fun. So the student gets to see the uh, different patterns and hear the different patterns. Um, and of course, uh, this is an online game, so you could do that. Uh, and they can also work with it at home. So it's, it's a nice way maybe to practice doing rhythmic patterns at home. 
Another fun way to create your own rhythm is use flashcards. So you can use different colors uh, of flashcards and each uh, flashcards has a different size to represent the note value. Uh, so that's visually easier for the student to really process. Then you can put the cards in a specific order, whatever order, and then clap or tap or use a, a fun instrument to do the rhythm. And then after that, you can reorganize the cards with the student or reorder them and explore it in a different way by using the same instrument or a different instrument. Um, this way, visually, they're going to easily recognize the rhythms and then they're going to have fun exploring it and listening to different sounds when they are uh, playing uh, the rhythm. The fun thing about it, it really motivates the student to explore, be creative. There is no right or wrong way to you to create this rhythm, just, you know, enjoying the, the whole activity. So really fun to try. So for music reading, it's important to identify students best learning pathway, whether it's oral or visual or by rote or a combination. Uh, it's really important to find that out. Uh, now I'm going to talk about different ways to approach music reading. Uh, whether color coded, graphic notation, modeling, or using music reading games. Uh, it could be also a combination of a few things. So let's talk about color coded. Um, here, for example, we can take a traditional piece or a song and use the solfege uh, color coded uh, so the student can, can follow. And um, with some students who really have a hard time with uh, traditional notation, I really like to use the color-coded tune xylophone um, so that the student can follow and easily identify. Of course, you can use stickers on the keyboard or uh, the piano for color-coded. Color um, and if you feel that um, and now a student can associate it with the letter names like C, D, E or Do, Re, Mi, then you can use, as you can see on the slide, uh, color-coded with the note name. And, and just follow that. For students who can read the traditional notation with a bit of help, you can color it out, color out the, um, the notes with the solfege colors. Um, that might also help the students, you know, uh, go through the traditional notation music reading. Now, if you're gonna look at graphic notation, which is basically using signs and symbols to make sense of the music, uh, as you can see, this is a way, another way of approaching music reading. You could use any symbol or, you know, anything that makes sense to the student, involve the student if, uh, if they can to make sense of this music. And then you can play the pieces based on, you know, um, all of those signs and symbols that uh, you decided to use. So this could be our edge for right hand and a circle, a black circle for the, you know, the quarter note, uh, it's going down, steps, uh, one step down, and then the rest could be a black square, but again, they could be colored, you could use whatever you feel is best for the student. Now, modeling or teaching by road could be really helpful for students if they just listen and see how you play a phrase or the piece. I have a lot of students who really benefit from that. So I do this a lot, a lots of demonstration in the lesson, but I also support it with a video that I sent a video at home. So I record whether I'm working on a phrase or right hand only, left hand only, or the whole piece or a section, uh, whatever um, it, it helps the students. So this is an example, for example, that I'm focusing on right hand. So the student can watch, listen, and then practice. Music reading is quite um, hard or you know challenging. It's really nice to work on whatever challenging um, you know activity in a fun, like gamify it basically, like just make it a, a game. So if the students can, um, you could use note naming games. So there's a fantastic free website that you can use classics for kids and they have a note naming game. 
So you practice right hand, you practice left hand, you could do just a few notes or uh, and then switch um, just so that you keep reviewing uh, music notation. You can create slides or worksheets where you, uh, you know, uh, show the notes, big spaces, make it a big print so it's easy to, to read and you can color code it, of course. If you review it, then you can make a game. So what's this note? And then you practice doing that. So this is helpful, whether in person or online, to work with the students. Um, it does help a lot. I also like to use magnets because it gives also tactile feedback. So um, on the magnet, I can use color coded circles. So this is helpful and I can also, if the student is able, then I can put the like the notation as well. So either either way to help the students uh, will be fun to, to use. Um, and they, they will move notes around, you can make a pattern, uh, you can ask them, so what is Do or show me Do or can you play, you put the magnet, let's say, I put the magnet on Do and say let's play Do or let's find Do here first and then let's play it. So things like that just to simplify it, make it like a, a fun task and then transfer it to the instrument. So this is like a, um, a quick overview of some of the activities that you could do. But again, based on the, you know, the feedback from the student and what you observe, you can then adapt and change and you might find out other ways to do it. There is no one like perfect way to do it because each student is different. Uh, and so you really need to think about the best thing to work with each and every student. Um, and don't forget to have fun. That's the most important thing. So I hope that you have enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and bye for now.